Be afraid, very afraid, when the government gives away your privacy. You know something that you shouldn't keep private are these videos. We're trying to put out a lot of useful content, so please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Only about 50% of the viewers on these videos are actually subscribed, and as those numbers go up, the more these videos will show. So Rick, um, we're back here again. I know we've mentioned it in a couple of videos, but uh, it's, it's really time to start deep diving into this, and it'll probably happen again soon as these votes go in. But mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to talk about Senate Bill um, 906, is it? Uh, right, from again. Senator Portentino. Right, and I, I think it's important to understand, you know, what the actual application of the bill is, but before you can do that, you have to understand what the bill is actually asking for. And as far as I can tell, it's really asking for two se very separate things. Uh, and, and the first of which I'd like to kind of deep dive with you today, if, if, that, if that's something that we can do. The first part uh, would be that uh, parents are required to give information on uh, whether or not they're gun owners. Uh, but not only that, uh, they would be required to offer information on where they are stored and how they are stored. Uh, but even further than that, the student or the, that parent's child would then have to be questioned on his knowledge of the ownership of these firearms and where they're stored and how they're stored. Um, in, in my opinion, this is just a huge overreach, but um, we can get into that in a second. And I really want to know what your opinion is on that because uh, I think it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy to get there. Uh, but the, the second portion being uh, the actual application of law enforcement, because the second part of this would be giving power to the school administration to decide whether or not they feel like a student is in harm uh, and have the ability to search them and then search the owner's house. But um, I, wanted, I wanted to really focus on the first part and get your thoughts on uh, the overreach there. Yeah, I think breaking this down, there, there are two distinctly separate parts. You're, you're correct in that. Um, I guess we got to give Portentino props for once he created a brand new piece of legislation yeah. and then copy something off that he's done in the Assembly and now in the Senate. Um, having said that's probably the last somewhat positive thing I'll say in this. Uh, let's look first at what we've seen is the deterioration of privacy rights. And I want to point out a couple of small things up here at the front. You know, all this is being done under the guise of public safety, Kevin, trying to make sure that each of us out there um, are protected from bad things happening. And I mean, and who doesn't want to be protected? We all do. But what you have to look at is, you know, when I first got into guns, and I'm obviously older than you, uh, you know, there was no record. I didn't fill out anything when I purchased my first 22 rifle. And even when I went to go into a, an Explorer program in the late 70s um, and bought my first Model 19 Smith & Wesson, there wasn't the paperwork and all the records. And eventually, you know, pistols went under records with the DOJ. There was a lot of um, things said by primarily the National Rifle Association at the time about that. And then, you know, we moved on and more recently we added lo long rifles to that list. And then, you know, just a, a legislative season ago came this wonderful idea of, well, DOJ's done such a great job of keeping that private and secret and not screwing that up. And that's me being a bit sarcastic. Let's give it to the University of California because, you know, grad students never go off the, the wrong side of the thing. Everything's secure at the university. There's never breaches. And of course, we all know None of that's true, but they literally turned it over to everybody. And this had been attempted in other states. Like you can go back and look at when Sean Hannity of Fox News was all in a tangle when they released, hey, he has a CCW, he lives here in New York, and this is how many guns he has. Like that was a huge thing and pushback back there. Well, you know, that, that slid right past with the governor signing it. And we even had, had a, a chance, a full year to say, does that work? Is it safe? And now this new mode kind of strikes me of what we saw in the Cold War with the Soviet Union and other socialist Marxist countries, which was turn the kids against the adults and put teachers as like another branch of the intelligence apparatus against the people. 
And that's where I want to pull this back because what this is asking is when you go to sign your kid into school, you have to fill out a document that school teachers who have no experience in A, keeping us safe, B, California, we're like, what, 48th, 49th for education in the country? And teachers are saying, I don't have enough time. Oh, but here's another chore for you. We want you to collect firearms data, and then we want you to decide when that data should be shared, with whom it should be shared, how it should be shared. We want you to create all this. We want school officials to do this, which is trying school people who opted not to become law enforcement and to junior G-men for the government's use in California against law-abiding citizens. And the comparison I'll do it is it's all in there. Well, we're trying to prevent a mass firearm casualty. So are we. But if we were to look at the number, and as tragic as those events are, those don't even start to come to the number of, of youth who go to their parents, grandparents, or guardians' medicine cabinets, take out prescription drugs, things that people are legally allowed to have in need for their own health, and either use them and abuse them themselves or sell them to other students. And yet, has there been any legislation put forward by Portentino or any of those other cronies that said, hey, you know what, Kevin, when you sign your little kid up for school, can you give us a list of all your prescriptions, how you store them, who has access to them, does the kid use the same bathroom where they're stored? Oh, no, none. But yeah. firearms that impact far less people, that's now on the plate. Yeah, and it, it's definitely created a pattern that we continue to see. Uh, when you draw examples like that, it just becomes more and more clear. This, this isn't really about safety. Uh, and it, it rarely seems to be. I mean, they can slap the word safety. They can slap the word crime prevention on any bill. Uh, but if you actually look at it and, and look at what the potential outcomes or for past bills, what the outcomes actually were, uh, you can see that it's really a pattern in practice of trying to rid citizens of their firearms rights. Well, I mean, something that you said, and I've said in numerous of these um, videos, is like, hey, laws are created to fix an existing program. They are dialed in to target whatever the problem is. So let's go back to why Portentino says he's doing this. He's doing this because, oh my gosh, we have all these issues. Well, the issue is, if you look at all the mass shootings that involved youth, they're generally from junior high to high school, generally males, and generally have had a mental illness that has been well documented. That's public knowledge. So why are we having kindergarten teachers, you know, K through six, hey, let's do that. There's no problem. There hasn't been a problem there. So why are we focusing on them? And then where's the mental health issue? There's not, they don't even talk about that. And they never, they never do, and they never will. And, and the actions speak louder than words, and they really seem to be okay with the mental illness problem because we don't, year after year, see any sort uh, of legislation trying to curb that. And uh, alongside that, yeah, I mean, it, it just it becomes about data gathering. Mm -hmm. um, people that gather data for a reason. Uh, we keep seeing ways that they are gathering it, but they don't really ever come out and tell us the results or tell us why. Uh, I think that we should be highly skeptical uh, when bills like these come up of even their intentions because it's obviously not, like I said, about safety. And I think the other thing you got to look at is it's been part of the public debate through this pandemic that um, and parents have been uniting across the country on both issues that are Democratic and Republican and everything in between politically, Kevin, of like, that's not the teacher's responsibility. I mean, and it's a wide breadth of subjects that this has come up on. And, you know, I'm going to go to a famous quote because I think it's just um, part of this. So I'm going to read it from my phone. But it's, education in the school is one, but it's not a substitute for education at home. Let my no father and mother lay to their souls the flattering unction that they can shirk their duties and think that these duties will be performed by the school teacher, no matter how good that teacher is. Teddy Roosevelt said that. Said parenting belongs to parents, and we're not supposed to throw that on the teachers. Yet that's exactly what this bill will mandate: is that we'll tell teachers, you got to be the parent, you got to be the law enforcement officer, you got to be. 
what we're going to see is good teachers leave. Mm -hmm. Bad teachers that say, oh, I get to be a teacher and a cop and a this and a that. We'll sign up for it. But is that what we really want? No, and I, I honestly, I, I long for a day uh, because we don't have it right now. Uh, like the Teddy Roosevelt days when we have a president who actually understands what the Constitution is. Uh, unfortunately, our president right now doesn't understand the Second Amendment, doesn't understand its application, um, but uh, he obviously did. He understood that personal responsibility uh, is a founding principle of this nation, and, and that's all that we're really asking for here when we oppose a piece of legislation like this. I don't often do this, Kevin, but I'm going to argue with you for once. And here it goes. I think our governor is well documented as thou shalt have nobody else but him and his wife teach their kids. But if your teacher or you as a person don't agree 100% with him, he wants to supplant you with who he thinks is going to teach your kids the way he wants well. them taught. I don't know if this is really going to be an argument, <laughs> uh, but it's definitely a contradiction that you just pointed out. And especially through COVID in California, we've seen just so many cases of, of rules for thee, but not for me. And uh, this is no different. You will see um, the elites in this country, in this state, homeschool their kids while continuing, while continuously degrading our public school system, just like you see uh, CEOs of, of tech companies mm -hmm. not let their kids use the technology that they create and sell. Uh, so there's there's obviously a base of knowledge mass there. mass farmers using organic food to feed their kids, but not mm -hmm. letting them eat the stuff they grow on their own farms. Yep, that'd and, be another one. And, the, and this is no different. This is an assault on our children and on our homes within the education system that our government has set up. So it's time for us to take a stand and it's time for us to say no. And, and that's certainly what we plan to do. I got to tell you, Rick, I, I've got a two year old and you might call me crazy or, or whatever, but we're already looking at preschools. We are now having to heavily weigh the options of how we can get this kid homeschooled, because if this is the message that's going to continuously be sent to us from our government, I don't want any part in it. And I can't really think of a whole lot of people who would. Well, I'm no different. I mean, you know, um, just became a grandparent, um, which is a beautiful thing. And we're trying to help our kids out with our grandson. And that's one of the things we're looking at as well, Kevin. I mean, I think all of us are on there. You know, my concern is like, you know, I want my grandchildren to be raised in a world where diversity of thought and ideas is there because that is what has promoted the advancement of humanity. And I feel like we're living in a culture where it's a unification of one thought, one ideal set by a politician. And that will, will destroy humanity faster than anything. And, you know, so I'm right there with you. We're trying to look at every resource that we can give to our kids to support educating our kids. And we're not even in there as, as grandparents. I'm not telling my, my son or daughter-in-law, like, it has to be this way. I'm just saying, don't give it up to a system that doesn't care about anything. Yeah. And, and, you know, when it comes to enforcement in these things, I, I don't even know if, if you read the bill, it plans to have this implemented by 2023. Okay. Uh, Wait, we, when's the last time government <laughs> ever got anything done on time? Well, here's the problem though, because the law will be become effective. So it doesn't really matter whether or not they have the the foundation that they need or not. The law would become effective regardless. We saw this with the ammunition regulations when they started the background checks and that. We've seen it in the past with other ways that they have tried to record keep and regulate things. When you try to implement something without training staff mm -hmm. um, and without having an actual foundation, it, it's going to cause disaster and more people are going to be harmed. Well, where's the enforceability? So let's just say they throw this thing out there and let's say some brilliant school staff, you know, ministry of staff comes up with something, even though there's not a guideline, as you correctly point out, it's just this ethereal idea, um, which leaves a lot of interpretation and way too much latitude for any government agency. But at the end of the day, if they don't do it, where's the enforceability? And this is what I keep wanting to harp on. It's like we have all these laws that are allegedly supposed to protect us, 
but there's no enforceability and that is being done in a present day where law enforcement agencies are somewhere between 20 and 40 percent understaffed depending on the location so you know this is like why people aren't getting stopped at stop signs you and i were talking earlier before this video like you know if you don't have law enforcement to tell people don't run a something as simple as a stop sign people are going to do it and we've even talked about the number of people are doing it and then that leads to well we don't have enough law enforcement to stop people from you know smashing store windows so what's happened that's one up we don't have enough people now we're going to throw yet another program in there and say enforce this knowing our legislature fully knowing because it's not like a hidden secret for many of us that we already are short law enforcement and we already have rampant crime rates rising in every other category but you know what let's add let's just put more on the pile and not define it and and not only that it <laughs> This brings political ideology into school. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a reason why you are seeing videos going viral at school board meetings uh, right now, and that's because parents are pretty fed up. This does nothing but reinforce that. And, mm -hmm. and Rick, what, I mean, what is to stop a person who works at a school with a specific political ideology from lying? Nothing. Nothing. You and I both know, I mean, Kevin, you bring up a great point. Um, I can think that just in, on the hunting side of the house, the number of people that are anti-hunting, anti-everything that we've called out for lying, we've called out for plagiarizing, their own universities have said, yep, they plagiarized their you know, thesis or dissertation, depending if it was a master's or doctorate's degree, which means they lied, they cheated. Yet the state of California is like, so, well, you know, the analogy that I gave to somebody the other day was, this is like when you go to do a house remodel. You judge the remodeling of that house because there was an actual plan. Like, hey, we're remodeling the bathrooms, for example. But if I just say, hey, I'm remodeling, no plans, no budget, and you show up and it's a prison camp, you're gonna be like, dude, that wasn't a remodel. And I'm gonna look at you and go, bro, I didn't say it was going to be that kind of remodel. I just came up with this on the fly and pretty damn good job. And this is what we're going to see. We're going to see thing after thing be just tossed out because politicians no longer actually have to come up with the idea and put stuff down because they know when they do, it'll get defeated because it's not feasible. But feasibility has went out with the dodo now, which is an extinct bird for those who don't get the reference, because everybody's attitude is well just name it claim it and we can figure it out and manipulate it and nobody can say well that's not fair because all i gotta do is look back and go well kevin i never said i wasn't going to do that and that's right. the scary part is passing this kind of stuff without getting it defined we don't date people without defining a relationship why are we allowing laws that define our relationship